It's a little insane. There's a lot of snow there. Did you bring your, uh, you bring your arm floaties and your flippers? I'm wearing jeans, I know it's such a sin. Brutal. None of my winter clothes fit. That sucks. We're all ridiculously uncomfortable. So oh no. For the best. Yep. Better keep moving. Got to stay warm. Yep. The temperature is warmed up, so that's good. Yeah, it's warming up too. It's getting closer to like 25, 26 degrees. Everything's buried. I found the backhoe. Took me a few minutes. Nice. Uh oh. Looks like our hydrants are disappearing. Come back, hydrant, come back. There you are. Hey, buddy. Where'd the other one go? Oh, there it is. Oh, you guys will be hidden again by morning. I'm sure of that. Probably ought to take this guy. Well, guys, it's finally happening. <laughs> First of all, we're finally getting a serious winter storm. Serious for us. It looks like at least two feet of snow in about 36 hours. That's enough to wake people up and get everybody out of bed. But what I mean is Alyssa and I have been a, the benefactor of many kind and generous people over the last few years who have helped us when something like this happened. And we just didn't have the resources to deal with it. Of course, we lived a much more modest lifestyle. And so we had less to maintain, but we have equipment now. The house is comfortable. It's cozy inside. We have everything we need. We've got water, hot showers, food, electricity. I don't think we're gonna lose electricity in this storm. Could be wrong. Some of the trees are losing snow, but there's no wind or anything. And the snow is extremely light. So hopefully we'll get through this one unscathed. But what I meant to say was we're now finally in a place where we can help other people. And it feels really good. So this storm, is the biggest one we've had this year. And it comes later in the year, which usually catches people off guard because it's been a real wonky winter. Snow, melt, ice, rain, and kind of catches people asleep a little bit. They don't plow or they don't shovel. And then this happens and it puts you in a really bad spot. So we've spent the morning on the phone just calling around to neighbors in the area, some of them older, and just seeing who we can help and how we can help. It sounds like there's a few people who are out helping other people and the consequence to that is their family now needs help. Kind of how community works, right? So we're blessed to have a backhoe and a willing spirit in the time. So I think Alyssa is going to jump on with me. She's crazy. And uh, we're going to go see who we can plow out and maybe who we can get functional. Of course, the problem is this storm's not done yet, so they're really not in the clear per se, because we're expecting probably another eight to 10 inches tonight. So tomorrow morning, we'll be right back in the same position. But if we let it get too deep, we have a new problem where it gets very difficult to move and it gets harder and harder to find places to put it. So you're better off taking it off in layers. And that's kind of the strategy behind plowing. Whew. All right, I found the backhoe, it's time to go. joke no joke knee high <laughs> get out yeah that'll do it's a decent decent snowfall we would have been in really sore shape two years ago. Well, all snow's fun regardless of the first 10 minutes. That's true, yeah. Pretty sure we just doubled our snow pile right here. Just pulled out of this drive. 
driveway. He's 85 years old. And he just changed his mind. He said, I don't need help. I'm happy. I want to be snowed in. <laughs> he said the only thing he cares about is getting the 4th of July. I think he's probably good. So maybe we'll take a swipe out of these guys real quick and we'll go help somebody else. Alyssa is inside warming up and I've got instructions on what to do, so away we go. Hey guys, how's 
it going? A little snowy out there in the field, huh? Every once in a while I drag my belly too. Yeah. folks already got plowed out. They were pretty tough cookies for a long time and I think they finally just said, you know what, we should probably just get a snow plow. <laughs> Alright, on our way home, what are you going to drink when we get home? I'm kind of hungry. You're hungry? I think it's soup. Soup. Soup That's, and smokies. That sounds amazing. Some hot soup? Heck yeah. This forecast. They're, no, they weren't right. They're were wrong. <laughs> no, they were wrong by a mile. Right, like way more snow. But way more snow, yeah. All right, I'm putting this closer to the block heater. <laughs> yeah. Something tells me we're gonna need it in the morning. Yep. We made it. Get inside. Oh. Can you move? Oh. Do you want me to carry you? I'm okay. Okay. I'm really, I'm not that cold, but. Oh yeah, you are. <laughs> I'm ready to be warm. Oh, we have secret, secret goods. <sighs> Look what ended up in our backhoe bucket. Oh yeah, look at that. Sausage. Yeah, do you want to take some? Well, I mean, we just leave it in, in the scoop for the next month. <laughs> Man, so excited. For this. Yeah, I say we have some of those for I, dinner. Yes, I will th start thawing them immediately. Okay, I'll bring two of these in. Okay. The super. What super? Where's the car? Where is the car? Oh my gosh. A couple years ago. <laughs> this is the this definitely is the winner. <laughs> We're not going anywhere tomorrow until we plow. I'm excited for tomorrow. Are you? Snow. We're supposed to get another foot tonight. Seriously, that wow. car is going to be gone by the morning. <laughs> so we should definitely not touch it cuz yeah. I want to see this in the daylight. It's going to be awesome. Here you go. Well, we went outside and he stuck, stayed asleep on the apron of the house and he wanted back inside. All right, because he can't even, he'll disappear. No, he'll disappear. Yeah, he'll like vanish. Okay. Wow, I don't, I don't know if you guys can see that, but it reads 2-0. That's our kind of snow. Well, the backhoe did fantastic. Really earned its keep today. I'm really proud of the backhoe. I'm really proud that we didn't have to put the big chains on. <laughs> Those big chains are heavy. They're like, what are they, 300 pounds a piece, 250 pounds a piece, something like that. But I did take one with us just in case we end up getting a pinch because they really help keep the backhoe from side, side slope and uh, kind of have a strategy that we use so we don't need them. And in this case, we ended up not needing them. That worked out pretty good. Lost one of our uh, connections there, so we need to get that repaired. Never mind, it looks like it's still there but it's all bent and broken. So, man, we'll have to we'll have to cut that off probably and get that fixed. This one's still on here. I'm not sure why that's not hooked onto something. It's amazing what driving down the highway does to these chains. If mudding gets mud all over your truck, then snowing gets snow all over you. Look at this. This is all just from the front tires 
flipping snow up into the cab and poor Alyssa was sitting on the side over there and I was trying everything I could to keep the snow from getting flipped up on her but look at all that there's just nothing you can do Nice work. Feels good to help neighbors. Looks like, man, <laughs> wow. That's over knee deep. Looks like we got our own project for tomorrow. Probably better get the backhoe plugged in so it's ready for the morning. It'll just keep it warm overnight. Makes it that much easier to start. Nice to go inside, be warm, eat some dinner. Oh wait, probably ought to go rescue a couple of our cameras that I set outside. Yeah, that one. Put another one over here. <laughs> Guys, I've been trying really hard to capture the snowfall. And I'll tell you what, it's really hard. Whoa, I don't even think I can, oh there it is. It is, <laughs> it's almost buried. There's a camera in there. It's all buried in snow and frozen. If you guys don't know, a time lapse is kind of like a gift that you give yourself. The thing is, you have to wait till it's done to kind of unwrap the gift, if you will. And I don't know, there's something about time, the ability to just look at things outside the human experience. And time lapses are super cool, but you have to set them up and then you have to let time pass. And you have no idea if you got anything or not until you wait until it's all over, right? And then when you put the SD card into the computer, that's when you find out if you had a really good idea or a really bad one. Is the sauna ready? Yeah. Is it fired up and hot? Yeah, take your clothes off and come me. I don't know why I would want to join you in the, the sauna. <laughs> it's about how I looked. Is it? But you're walking. You're well, I took all my clothes off. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Time to, time to find the, the man within. What don't you doing in don't here? look at the temperature, just appreciate the warmth. What are you doing in here? You got the heat room on? Guys, there's a reason I put that heater in there. Because I knew that no matter what, Alyssa would be happy if she had a hot shower <laughs> and a heater. It's true, it feels so amazing. It does. <laughs> Warms up quicker. I mean, 68's not bad, but when you're pretty chilly, it doesn't hurt to sit in front of like 80 degree heat. Five, 90, how high does this thing go? It helps dry your clothes out too if you're a little bit damp. Heck yeah. So, Makes me happy. Soup and Smokies and be pretty good night. And happy, happy. Bugaboo. What are you doing? Oh, did you have a good day? Huh? Did you know that the snow is deeper than you are long by times two? Basically, you're probably going to be in all night. Okay, I have to go jump in the sauna with mom, okay? And then we're going to have Smokies for dinner. Okay. The sauna progressed into a hot shower. A long, guilt-free hot shower. Ooh. Alyssa knows how to do her soups. This is a homemade ham. I'm going to call it a chowder. Uh, it's made with a lot of things from the garden, I'm pretty sure. And stock that she made from some chicken feet that we purchased locally. Yum. It always feels good when we're able to help a neighbor out. It hasn't really been possible for a long time. And with a big winter storm like this, by the way, it's still coming down hard out there. From the time we left until we got back, it's four inches deeper. And they think it's going to be another five to eight tonight. But it's been a long time, you know, since we've been able to help people, mostly because we haven't had our basic needs met. And life's been pretty hard for us. And we've been blessed, fortunate, to land in a neighborhood where people just help each other. 
It's, it's a community. Now what that means is not that people just do charity or that if you aren't helping yourself, people are gonna come bail you out. No, no free lunch, not in this neighborhood. But if people know you're a hard worker, you're a community driven person, and you're, you take care of yourself, people are very willing to, if they see you in need, help out. Feels really good to return those acts of kindness to other people. Something Alyssa and I talk about all the time, but we probably haven't shared too much in some of our previous videos, is the decision of where to buy land. Now, I will say that this was not, we're not gonna give ourselves credit for this, but I will say that it's been a very big key to our success in this whole journey is who our neighbors are. I think it's really easy when, you, when you're in the land buying process and you get a bunch of listings from a realtor and you go look at them, you're looking at them through the eyes of how much land am I getting, how much value is there, does it have a well or is it on a public water system or whatever. Do I like the view, am I gonna garden, where am I gonna put the house, where's the driveway? Those are some basic questions I think we all ask. But I'm not sure that it's common knowledge or common practice to find out who your neighbors are and to maybe even door knock and just introduce yourself and see who you're gonna be living next to. Because we have seen where folk, a few folks go through that process and have the exact opposite experience where they land in a neighborhood where nobody helps each other. Even though they're capable, they have the tools and they even have the time. And for whatever reason, they just don't do anything to help each other. It's like a very stingy neighborhood. That will hurt you faster than getting a bad deal on some land or maybe having a mediocre view or whatever the situation is. Know your neighbors. This has been a key to our success.